The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting group. Access Fort Wayne is a department of the Allen County Public Library. If you or anyone you know might be interested in making a television show, please call 260-421-1250. Welcome to the Cashman Mind, Body, Spirit Show. Well, I hope my body's attached to my mind today. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is a very hopeful message today, but extremely important, this uh, being uh, Breast Cancer Month. Uh, and uh, what I'm going to tell you today, which is really great news, really good news, is that 50 to 70% of breast cancer can be prevented by lifestyle. Isn't that interesting? Rarely do I speak to a woman or a man, men can get breast cancer too, that knows that. So let's get on the road and go on this adventure together. Feel uh, free to uh, Speak to me if you see me or see me for free at the Three Rivers Pharmacy Friday morning to see people for coaching uh, for free. And speak to me more about this, okay? Uh, and uh, th this, I was passionate enough about this subject that I wrote a book, Breast Cancer Prevention. Prevention is the cure. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Uh, if you could prevent 50 to 70% of breast cancer by lifestyle, why wouldn't every woman know that? Why are we providers, educators, public health not telling this to women? Remember, men, men get it too. Uh, I'm out there though, and <laughs> let's go on this adventure together a little bit. What I will do really is review my book a little bit, chapter by chapter. You can get it on Amazon books uh, or uh, easily enough. And I will use as a reference also another book I'd like to hold up and encourage you to uh, maybe uh, read that, but mine is a lot easier to read, <laughs> although hers is definitely, I think, the world standard, just the best, and I'll speak about it frequently, uh, by Susan Love. She's a surgeon professor at UCLA, and a great reference book to read about things in more detail that I may be speaking about, although I myself uh, wrote my book from uh, many other uh, uh, books also, but I thought she was uh, really the best. Also, the Mayo Clinic Breast Book, I think it's an excellent source of uh, uh, information, uh, especially if you're thinking of having surgery done uh, or something prophylactically, for example. Uh, uh, you need these things in more detail. So let's, let's begin, on the, on, let's get on the road, let's get on that uh, uh, cycle and start pumping away, <laughs> okay. So how common is breast cancer? I mean, this is really surprising. Uh, every year, about 200,000 cases in this country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about 1.5 1. 5 million cases per year in the world. They've gone up some since this has um, uh, been, been written. 40,000 deaths. That's, that's not a kidding around manner when 50 to 70 percent of these uh, can be prevented. Don't you think public health, universities, med school, or even, say, Vera Bradley will let you know that? Okay. Uh, I'm letting you know that uh, today. Excuse for my passion, but we're talking about lives and suffering. Uh, and uh, actually, we are curing a few more people, but in terms of incidents, if anything, it's, it's, it's going up. Uh, it's not going down. 
Uh, what about the effect of age? When is it uh, more common? It does increase with age, okay? 80% of the cases occur after age 50. And some of it has to do uh, with, with hormones that change uh, at that time. Uh, it is uncommon below age 30, okay? Uh, so the main reason people get it when related to hormones mainly is the length of time male or female is exposed to the hormone estrogen. So if a child starts menstruating at an early age uh, and stops menstruating uh, at a much older age or is taking estrogen hormones, breast cancer rates go up. Mm -hmm. Remember, they used to give estrogen after menopause, they found out increased breast cancer rates. So they know that really uh, quite well. So if menses starts at age nine or 10, their lifetime exposure, it clearly is, it, it's longer and it's of uh, concern. Okay, and uh, so the breast cancer rates are partly related to uh, genetics, but that's only about 10%. Mm -hmm. So just looking at the absolute figures, okay, uh, that's about 10% 10, 10 chance that in your lifetime uh, you would get breast cancer, uh, especially women. Male incidence is significantly less. But then there's relative statistics depending on, on uh, uh, your lifestyle habits, uh, for example. And the R, which we'll speak in more detail, some people that have inherited certain genes, the BRCA genes, BRCA, that's breast cancer, the, the BRCA gene one and two, which you will hear uh, about, especially to, today here a little bit. But uh, so you can inherit that, but also uh, can, based on gene expression, what you do to increase the chance of that gene having some effect. So you can control uh, your destiny, uh, partly your uh, uh, destiny. So th what are the main ones? Uh, smoking has increased rates of breast cancer associated with it. Alcohol consumption. They used to say, you know, three drinks a week is okay, maybe uh, wine or something. But actually, the latest, what I'm reading is, is any alcohol increases cancer rates. Mm -hmm. So... Don't start if you're not consuming it, okay? Otherwise, otherwise, low amounts, you might get away with it, then you might not. So we get smoking, uh, we have, we have uh, alcohol. Uh, also, it's related uh, to being overweight or obese. Rates are, are much higher uh, in people that are overweight or obese, so there's something we can uh, do something about. Stress has an effect, okay? Uh, the more stress in your life, the more you be eating and, and bad habits, alcohol, cigarettes, uh, uh, affects, affects it, uh, which is a, um, a, uh, a big one. Exercise has also an effect. Uh, people who exercise more seem to have less uh, uh, bre breast cancer, but th that is the main ones. Uh, so not smoking or maybe not dr drinking at all, exercising, uh, being of uh, a normal weight. Uh, and age makes a difference. The incidence is much different at different ages. Uh, and we'll go through that uh, uh, more. But there's the, uh, and the one I didn't mention yet is exposure to chemicals. For example, if you had Hodgkin's disease, you might have had radiation to uh, kill the tumor, but you will have radiated uh, the breast, uh, for example, they have in increased rates of breast cancer and exposure to toxins. Uh, chemicals you're using, chemical farming, Agent Orange, uh, using uh, a lot of uh, bathroom products and different chemicals can have a small uh, increased chance. So chemical exposure, radiation, increased breast cancer uh, uh, rates. So what is important really uh, is, and the good news is that it's not just uh, our genes that does it. Uh, it's the milieu 
or that we are living in the the uh, what is around our activities determines breast cancer uh, rates what's the root cause what are you feeding the roots what habits are you feeding uh, the roots make a big uh, 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 a, a difference uh, and uh, the amount of hormones that we spoke about that a little bit, the estrogen, for example, how long you've been exposed to estrogen, okay? Uh, and is menopause, for example, at an early age uh, could make a, a, a difference. So hormone exposure, uh, uh, clearly, if you have 50 hormones in our body, so uh, the amount of estrogen exposure appears to be the biggest uh, risk. What about heredity and uh, breast cancer? Uh, we can uh, inherit uh, the BRCA gene, B-R-C-A. We all have this, some form of the gene in us. It's only if it's changed that it has significance. Every cell in our body can have a BRCA gene in it because it modulates rates of cancer, for example. But if we get the changed BRCA gene, the one, the atypical BRCA uh, gene, that increases breast cancer rates. There's number one and number two. Males get the two BRCA gene, females the one. Uh, uh, if you inherit that, uh, you, uh, if you inherit both genes, then uh, you will double the rate, for example, but still it has to be uh, expressed, okay? And only about 3% of the people have the bad BRCA gene. So, I mean, what's the big deal? Uh, we're talking about three percent of the, of, the, of the people uh, but uh, if they everybody in the family has breast cancer that might be a time to get some genetic testing done to see if you have or not but otherwise I'm not sure I'd bother it's expensive uh, and if you follow a good lifestyle it not only will help breast cancer but avoid diabetes and other illnesses so lifestyle changes uh, always uh, uh, significant so you, you are not just your genes. That's the good news. That's the good news. It's gene expression. It's the soup uh, that we're exposing. Uh, uh, DNA, the one that writes our genetic code. And what's the soup we are providing? The roots, what are the roots? What are we feeding uh, the, the roots? What is uh, uh, critical? So. It does occur in families, but it's not truly, totally uh, uh, genetic, okay? So the lifestyle patterns vary a great deal. So your genes at birth is not the whole story. You may see it running in the family, but they all have the same, say, not good lifestyle habits, uh, and they may uh, have a higher rate uh, in the family. Most gene-related breast cancers occur before age 50 or so, okay? So the incidence indeed uh, is uh, low, and some people have prophylactic, in other words, they'll take the, have the breast removed because there's a high incidence in the family. But again, to me, I, I get genetic counseling uh, uh, from a couple of places. Look, look online, do a lot of reading before considering that. Uh, uh, because uh, because of great habits, you still might not get it, okay? So that's a complex decision I will not make for you, except for you to gather a lot more in information and do a lot more uh, uh, research. Genetic testing is getting uh, less expensive all the time, uh, and look into that. Insurance many times doesn't cover that, okay? Uh, and and uh, so... Uh, the uh, incidence uh, of uh, uh, breast cancer, like I said, is about one in 10 people if you take a lifetime, the absolute figures. So uh, w what I'm seeing here in this next chapter, prevention really is the cure. Uh, they have found, uh, you know, they thought when the DNA was, helix was discovered by Watson and Crick in 1954, they thought, well, we'll have the cure uh, to breast cancer, nothing flat. Well, even Dr. Love admits that's really not happened because what they found is that uh, breast cancer uh, 
is caused by probably 50 to 100 different genes. It's not just one gene. Uh, and, and these drug companies are rushing to develop the medication, which is a wonderful thing, and very bradley send some money to Indianapolis for them to do research. A wonderful thing. Do you think they're going to discover 50, that you get to take 50 drugs to prevent or cure your disease? Do you see the problem? In the meanwhile, we can save the lives of 70% of the people by proper lifestyle. So I recommend, let's teach the lifestyle, the good habits, we're gonna save 50% of the people. Let research continue and support it with lots of money. No problem. But to send every dime down there and keep nothing here to teach wellness, I think it's a mistake. My opinion. <laughs> but uh, I feel pretty strongly about it because because if we can prevent half the breast cancers in this town or in this nation or in this world by teaching what we already know, this is right out of Susan Lewis's book too, okay, and my book, uh, and other books, okay. I think we uh, uh, ought to do it. Uh, and uh, uh, so weight and breast cancer prevention is my next chapter. And so, uh, again, uh, what is when we are overweight, when we have, and it's a judgment-free zone, you know, we've all had this problem. My dad had dealt in New York, and I ate the wrong food for a number of years. And when I started eating right, uh, eating, eating less sugar, the booger, and the hooker, okay? Sugar, the booger, and the hooker. I noticed my pants started falling off my body, so I must have had about 10, 15 pounds around the waist. So this is a judgment-free zone, okay? I'm just trying to get put out information. It, it, what they found is that fat has a lot of the hormone estrogen in it. So if you have more weight, you have more estrogen, and the rate of breast cancer go up. And the breast cancer cells, they're all different. They're not all the same. Some respond to different hormones, some respond to estrogen, some to progesterone, some to exercise, some to smoking, some to alcohol. Uh, so uh, re in reality, remember I said many different genes determine uh, the tumor. It's not just one cell type. So to aim one drug, and think you cure the tumor. There are exceptions, but 80, 90% of the time, that ain't gonna work, okay? There are real lymphomas that respond to one drug, of course, and that, that's a great thing. So uh, what's the easiest way to get our weight under control to pay attention to the sugar content? 50 years, industry told us it was the fat. NIH, FDA, uh, Ansel Keys, uh, Harvard University, they all told us fat was the problem. When they knew all along, it was the sugar. They knew it. You know, it was industry money, lobbying money. There's a Dr. Otto Warnberg in the 30s in Germany under Adolf Hitler when he was a Jewish gentleman even got the Nobel Prize for medicine. And he got it for the second time because he had out the metabolic theory of cancer. He determined that cancer is a sugar feeder. Through fermentation, it took 13 molecules of sugar to feed one cancer cell, when normally it's one on one. Mm -hmm. But his theory was destroyed for a period of time, 1954, when, we, when the researchers all switched to the genetic theory that we would, one gene would determine breast cancer and we'd do one drug and they'd be gone. Well, then I found out it's probably 30 to 100 genes and maybe more than that. Uh, uh, and they're switching back slowly to the metabolic theory, which is kind of what I go along with because if we develop, if you ever were to look at the metabolism uh, of, of 50 hormones in our body, uh, I, 
I was reading a book the other day on keto metabolism. They had a page in there, the metabolic pathways uh, uh, of uh, sugar, fat, and protein, beyond comprehension. Be, that picture is beyond, that's how complex it is. But for someone to come up with, uh, someone who has a brain like Otto Warburg and determine in the metabolic pathway that energy is, pro is produced, can stop it with one medication that doesn't affect metabolism of other cells. For example, you give a cure for a lot of cancers. I think the day is coming. I think the day is coming. So I think that that's the metabolic theory of cancer. But again, we need to do research, and I'm just giving you my, my thoughts on it. Uh, so, so there are women that are at higher risk for breast cancer that have the, the, the BRCA gene, for example, that maybe they inherited one from one parent. The incidence uh, goes up a little bit, but if they inherit it both, uh, then a uh, significant increase. Uh, and if you have both BRCA genes uh, and don't follow proper lifestyle, uh, by the time you're uh, 80, 90 years old, probably 90% chance that you had uh, breast cancer. But again, uh, actually, the BRCA gene itself is a reparative enzyme. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. that gene is a reparative gene. Uh, and it is a mutation of the BRCA gene that's the abnormal one. They have about 700 different mutations. And if we get a mutated BRCA gene, we'll want more likely to have cancer. But again, is it going to express itself? Depends on the soup, the roots, the milieu that we provide for those cells. And here's one. They have, when they do autopsies on women and men who've died, no symptoms, no items of cancer, they find 39% have mutated cells in their breast indicating breast cancer, quietly sleeping, never activated because the people had good health habits, or in some people, they just don't express themselves. They're not smoking too much, they're not drinking too much, they're uh, exercise, exercising, haven't been radiated, for example. So uh, they found that true in, in prostates for men. Uh, uh, sort of uh, very in interesting. Uh, yeah, 39% of women have in them some evidence of breast cancer. Uh, uh, so, uh, and in, in some people, they, they're in, in situ, they're just a little bit of a change, and they're not activated. So, uh, uh, What about, we mentioned this earlier a little bit, what about prophylactic mastectomy? You know, having your breast removed because uh, past four or five generations that women have all had, had breast cancer and we're very worried about it. Uh, uh, and uh, actually, statistically, it does have some value. But I think that needs to be thoroughly researched you as an individual, if you decide on that. Uh, and you need to read books, look online, get a genetic counselor, maybe two of them, before considering uh, such a thing. Uh, sometimes taking like tamoxifen, which inhibits estrogen in part, but has side effects too. You gotta know about that. All these things can play a part. So I think this is a, that's, at the time, maybe to go see Dr. Susan Love or head for the Mayo Clinic, Cleveland Clinic, it's complex. Uh, I go to Asia Center, that's a huge dis decision. I'm going neither way. I'm not against it, I'm not for it. I think you need to seek knowledge. Uh, so we need to understand statistics a little bit in my next chapter here. Uh, absolute value is the incidence over a lifetime, 10% chance that uh, a woman, uh, lower incidence for men, might get uh, breast cancer over a lifetime. The relative risk would, would be involved, for example, uh, of things uh, like the, there's a high incidence in the family, for example, uh, or 
uh, that you're overweight and you smoke and you drink and you don't exercise, uh, you've been exposed to radiation, that's relative risk. Age makes a difference. Every year as we get older, for example, you're 20 years old, out of breast cancer, maybe less than 1%. But as the age increases, our percentages uh, increases. Do you still have your ovaries, for example? Uh, and uh, because uh, the ovary, uh, which makes progesterone and estrogen hormones, uterine cancer, for example, 75%, yes, 75% is related to being overweight. I had read that, so I asked the a cancer specialist, I was in the same elevator with her uh, a few years ago, I just read that and I asked her, she confirmed it. 75% of uterine cancer is related to being overweight or obese. Wow, uh, most women don't, don't know that. Uh, and uh, that's, that's an in interesting stat. You can prevent uterine cancer, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, it can kill you, it can harm you. And uh, uh, I think that's something to, to uh, th uh, think about. Ovarian cancer, too, is a bit related uh, uh, to uh, uh, being uh, overweight, and, and so is pancreatic cancer, the smoking and weight, so something to, to uh, consider. But there are some people that are thin and still have increased weight because they don't have as many fat cells, so they don't get as, as big. Uh, but if you run uh, CT scans on them, you see you have a lot of fat in their liver. Yeah. Fatty liver in, in themselves, they're the trophies <laughs> on the outside, fat on the inside, okay? Uh, they're a trophy. That's about 25% of the people. So to me, I always say you are what the blood tests and habits are, not just the way you look. Interesting, interesting. And uh, another way to explain the relative risk is, is look at it. If you smoke, you have a relative risk of 25% compared to a normal person, okay? 20% risk if you have the BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene, okay? And 1.5% uh, runs the risk of developing breast cancer with postmenopausal obesity. But actually, that represents a 50% increase in risk compared to premenopause. Okay, so uh, uh, so absolute risk, relative risk, is this stats you need to learn about a little bit when you're considering having your breasts removed. And someone says, "Well, you got X risk factor." You get to know something about statistics. What's the real incidence? If it's just one percent, you know, you might decide might not be might not be worthwhile. Other thing I was reading too, and Susan uh, loves a uh, uh, book that, around, you know, around the 18, last of the 1800s, beginning 1900s, they were really radical in removing the whole, uh, the axilla and, and the whole breast and doing radical breast surgery. Uh, many years later at the Cleveland Clinic, uh, they uh, determined it really wasn't necessary, okay? And, and uh, it's very complex. Uh, in terms of uh, how much to remove around the tumor. Uh, it, it would take me hours to discuss it on TV, and I'm not the one doing it, so I think it would take Susan Love or uh, some very experienced breast surgeon to tell you, Mayo Clinic or your individual surgeon in town who's got a lot of experience behind it, to tell you uh, what's the best approach, but you, you sometimes uh, radical surgery actually is more harmful, yeah. It's complex, uh, and you can read it in, in her book, very well uh, discussed. How much do you do a radical res uh, resection of the lymph nodes? And, and to talk about basic anatomy of the breast a little bit is a kind of uh, instinct. The uh, breast tissue sits on top of the pectoralis muscle, on, on top of it, uh, and it's uh, surrounded uh, also by lymph nodes that drain it in case there's an infection or something uh, and they, uh, around the breast and they go right to the nipple incidentally and they go to the axilla uh, out in the arm a little bit so if cancer is spreading it, it, you feel lumps over here and your breast is swollen 
infection or breast cancer. So uh, to learn about uh, self-examination and ultrasounds uh, and, and cysts that can form in lumps, uh, to examine your own breast at least once a month, someone might say a different rate, at least once a month, some might even say a week, I think it's a good thing so that you learn to feel what normal breast tissue is. Uh, and uh, usually cancer, the lumps are pretty big. And they may be surrounded by smaller ones. Usually it's hard, but uh, you need a piece of tissue under a microscope just to feel it yourself uh, to determine it's cancer. It's not going to happen. Even your family doctor uh, may not be sure. But if your arm is swollen and you have a lot of lymph nodes here and you feel a lot of lumps and you uh, suppose you're feeling in both breasts, you, you got to be a little bit concerned. But I, I, I suggest to have a positive attitude because even the things I recommend in terms of health habits apply <laughs> to cancer that's been spread. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, to even the way you think it's important. Suppose they tell you uh, breast cancer in both breasts and then the axilla. The power of your mind, Dr. Lashan published a book about power of positive thinking, uh, that because your thought process can influence your hormones, your neurotransmitters, and send messages to the cells to heal. Uh, Dr. Lashan, matter of fact, in his book, took a lady with metastatic breast cancer in New York City. <laughs> I didn't know him there, but three blocks from my house, the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Once a month, he took her to lunch, okay? He was a uh, psychiatric oncologist. Uh, they have lunch together, and then he would walk her through the museum, Metropolitan Museum of Art, where I live two blocks away. <laughs> walk through it on occasion. Uh, and to look at her favorite art, mind you, cancer spread everywhere. Then he restudied her five years later, found no cancer. That's an anecdote, one story. In science, that wouldn't prove a lot. But he turned around because of that, studied over 500 people mm -hmm. who had cancer. Remember, he's a psychologist, and he worked with them. He found that he could, on average, double their lifespan and increase their spontaneous cure rate, where your own immunity decided to get rid of all the cancer cells and cure you. Scientifically proven, a great book, Dr. Lachan. So your immunity, your own uh, lymphocytes, your own T cells, uh, can affect cancer rates. So that, that, that's important. That's where stress comes in. You're stressed out all the time and destroying your immunity uh, through stress, uh, which has been proven through science. You can do that, uh, that uh, you increase uh, the cancer rates uh, and stress in the family. If the husband dies, uh, pretty good chance something will happen to, to the wife within a few years. That's been well, pro been well proven. Uh, the stress things that affect your life death of a spouse is number one, uh, and then a child, and number three, loss of job. They can rate the stress reactions in your body. So this Candace Pert proved Molecules of Emotion, her book, that your thought process affects your health. It's not even taught much in the medical school today, uh, but it's in books, Molecules of Emotion, Candace Pert. I wrote a book called Welcome to Your Mind, Body, good book to read, explains the science uh, of this. Uh, so if you do have a metastatic breast cancer, don't give up. Don't let anybody tell you you get six months to live. Baloney. I mean, it would sound serious, but there are things you can do from, from uh, medications uh, to types of uh, focal radiation. You have a lot of choices, but you need to go to a major uh, center at that time, uh, and, uh, and, and you know, they are around uh, 
uh, in Texas and in, in New York and in Indianapolis and, and now in Fort Wayne, which they're having uh, uh, cancer centers. So none of this giving up business. Uh, what I like you to say, if they tell you this, I'm not going to die. And then you do everything you can, gather the information, have the treatments, become a positive thinker. Uh, what the mind can do is, is interesting. Uh, my son's a neurosurgeon. Uh, came to me one day. He says, uh, Dad, I think I know what you're talking about because he had a patient who had a malignant tumor in the brain and four kids and no husband, and she started screaming all night, and the next day the biopsy, which confirmed it, and he again went and told her, you I won't get to live six months. Didn't give any hope. He gave her no hope. The next day, she died. Mm -hmm. Negative thinking can affect your heart. It's like the voodoo effect, okay? In the old ancient times, if the shaman put his finger at you, that means he wanted you to die, and people wish you did. But it was real. It's real. It's nothing. It wasn't that some spirit came down and killed them. They killed themselves because of the hormones of negative thinking. So I think this is uh, uh, important. So in terms of uh, basic uh, breast anatomy, our breast sits on top of the pectoralis muscles. It has lymph nodes. It has many little glands, okay, and they have ducts that lead right to the nipple. Now, tumors can occur anywhere along the line, usually occur in, in, in the uh, uh, glands, but they occur in the, uh, in the ducts, interductal carcinoma, which is common, especially if it's in situ, just there, it's, it's not going to do much. But the outside can get inflamed, uh, infected. Uh, uh, for example, uh, breast milk. Uh, is the best milk for a child. <laughs> it has the human body makes omega-3 fats uh, in the milk that grows the brain the most. If you want the biggest brain in your child, breastfeed the child for, for a couple of years. Average in this nation, I think, is six months or less. But the longer, the better. Because uh, if you give it cow's milk, which I ca caution you about, Read a book by Joe Keon, okay? Cows and references in this book. Uh, cow's milk is meant for baby cows, not for us. There are 5,400 mammals. They all make different milk. If you were to give the milk of an animal in the zoo, say here's one species, there's the next species. If you give that milk of this animal, to the other species in the next cage, it would be dead. Veterinarians know better. They don't give the milk of one species to another because there's different amount of sugar, different proteins, and there are different sugars in them. Yeah. Us humans tolerate it a, a, a little bit, but Dr. Colin Campbell, China study, said the casein, the protein in milk, is the most carcinogenic chemical in the world. Hmm. Right in this book. Uh, read it. Hardly anybody knows that. Then I saw a CD. You can pull it on, on your phone or Google it. Walter, J-V-E-I-G-H-T. He put out a CD. Uh, and uh, Hunt Steele from out west, good nutritional teacher, who I met once, actually, uh, put out these uh, DVDs, which came in my mail the other day, and I watched him. If you think I'm brutal about milk, I like confirmatory evidence. I like so somebody confirm, say something negative, uh, doesn't confirm it. Or confirm, either way, I'll go either way, then I'll go read more or whatever. But he confirmed exactly what, what Joe Keon's been saying. Milk, cow's milk is made, meant for baby cows. Okay? So uh, if men also have breast tissue, it just isn't hormonally stimulated as much. Uh, but men indeed do develop uh, uh, breast cancer uh, at a lower rate, of course, uh, but interesting. Uh, so st let's talk about the ovaries a minute here. Uh, I have a chapter on, on that too. And uh, they produce estrogen and progesterone uh, is made there upon stimulation uh, from the pituitary gland, which gets a message from the hypothalamus ab above it, and that starts uh, 
the uh, menstrual cycle, uh, for example, uh, and uh, the uh, luteinizing LH hormone from the pituitary will then send a message to the ovary uh, to produce the egg, which will then head to the uterus, and progesterone uh, will uh, come from the ovary to the uterus and make it ready for this egg to be fertilized for you to have a baby. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, and the cycle of hormones I've been speaking about, you know, occurs for 40 years unless it's interfered with, uh, for example, uh, a pregnancy. Uh, they found statistically, too, that uh, women who've had a, a pregnancy early in life run a, a less breast cancer rate uh, mm -hmm. uh, kind of um, uh, instinct. But the ones who have a baby late in life, say in their 30s, they have increased breast cancer rate. Not a huge difference, but there is a difference. So to have uh, earlier or later does indeed make a, 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 a difference. But pituitary gland secretes FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, which has to do uh, with the uh, menstrual cycle, uh, uh, which is something that uh, women, of course, are familiar with. Uh, using birth control medications for uh, most of them actually re reduces ovarian and, and breast cancer rates, uh, more ovarian than breast cancer, pretty significantly. Mm -hmm. Or if a woman were to have her ovaries removed, it, it would have a, a, a reduction, pretty good reduction of, of breast cancer and ovarian cancer. And uh, uh, so, uh, and we really spoke about causes and prevention, about uh, li uh, life, uh, lifestyle. And uh, let's speak about a minute uh, our DNA, the basis of our life. Why does lifestyle make a difference? We have in us, every cell has some DNA in it, okay? That's part of the uh, helix that Watson and Crick discovered in 1954, for which they got the Nobel uh, Prize. Uh, and uh, it, and it's based on really uh, four d different genes, mainly, and the, per the, the permeation of each other, uh, and, and about 2.8 billion permeations. And they determine the color of your eyes and the color of your hair and, and your organs, and they send the message to the RNA. The RNA is the real uh, uh, messenger, for example. Uh, but uh, like I said, it's not common to have on there a gene that says, boom, you get breast cancer, okay? We do have the BRCA genes, but of our genetic script that we are born with, only 2%, uh, only 2% has been expressed. Uh, wonderful news. 98% <laughs> of our, our gene expression can be determined by our lifestyle. Isn't that wonderful news? Are we smoking, are we drinking? And actually it goes back a couple of generations. What did uh, mother and father do? What did their mother and father do? Uh, will determine uh, the structure of their genetic code, uh, permeations of, uh, of four uh, different uh, genes, A, T, and G, and C, okay? There are different permeations to determine 2.8 billion variations, <laughs> okay? But that's what determines evolution. But that's why evolution is so small, uh, because very little changes uh, occur. Uh, and, and most that occur, you live and die with them, and that's the end of them. Uh, um, and, uh, but some do get carried on, okay? And uh, so uh, the uh, DNA helix was discovered in 1954, uh, uh, all the cancer people thought, there's the answer to cancer, we're going to solve this very quickly because one gene determined breast cancer. Wrong, wrong, wrong. 30 to 100 genes, maybe more time to get done with all the uh, research. And research is important. I'm, uh, I'm uh, totally uh, for it. So our 98% of our genes we can change by our habits. Wonderful news. I'll try out of the room with it. No. <laughs> but exercise does make a does make a difference. 
And uh, what about myself? I just, since I celebrated my 44th anniversary or my 39th birthday, what I do to reduce stress or health habits? Uh, uh, for example, uh, I get, get up, I hug the wife, okay? It affects my neurotransmitter, okay? My two cats, 17 years old this, this month, sleep on the left side of my chest. Mm -hmm. I counted the heartbeat one time, and I think it's the same rate as mine. And every night for years, they've been sleeping right here. I come home tonight, they'll be jumping in my lap while I'm trying to read a book <laughs> above them, <laughs> two of them. Now, one, I can take one, but then two, it gets a little crowded. My, but my, I mean, they get a Susan Loves book, and I have two cats <laughs> on my chest. It's not, it's not, it's not, uh, not, not easy. Then I go downstairs, and I have, I have a window I can look out to a small lake, a lot of trees, okay? Bird feeders there. Uh, birds are already at work as soon as it gets light. Occasionally, matter of fact, a week ago, <laughs> I won't believe this, there's a pregnant deer there <laughs> standing on his hind legs. Both his arms are like this, and he's taking his long tongue. He's licking around the bird feeder, cleaning out the birdhouse, <laughs> cleaning out little houses I got with bird food in them. I don't see that very often, but uh, uh, that's life. It makes me feel good. I, unless it's storming, if it's lightning, I don't go out. I take a walk in nature. I walk around our pond. I look at all the trees and the leaves, and I may be yeah, singing a song. Yeah, if it's about five, ten memorized, I sing them. I look at the birds. The red-winged blackbirds are whistling at me. The cardinals are whistling at me. I whistle back. They're territorial. And I don't know if they're friends or if it's even the same one. <laughs> but I, I already did it today, and I only did half the walk because I didn't have time. But I get home, I'll do it again uh, because it's so relaxing. It's stress-reducing, OK? Then I play tennis and pickleball. And then you won't believe for exercise. Not that, that, that wouldn't be much, because I like it so much. I started taking tap dance lessons about a year and a half. And for a while, I thought, where's this leading me? But you know, in the last few months, I, I found the music. Everybody, body, appreciates the music differently. For me, it seemed to be the Bee Gees in their songs. It resonates with my body, and I, I don't have to think of my steps now. I know the basic steps. And, and I had about five songs of Bee Gees, and I had about Marley Floor that's twice as big as this, maybe. It's also black. I do it in the basement by myself. I love it. It's exercise. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. And last Sunday, you won't believe this one, but you can check. Uh, uh, Sheena, uh, from my uh, dance studio, invited me to, to perform. Saturday Night Fever with a Bee Gees song uh, at the Civic downtown with 150 children, little kids, medium kids, uh, performing. That, the most beautiful part was me. It was watching these kids go up the stairs with their earrings and their beautiful dresses and their beautiful smiles and their lipstick, and they were fantastic. You know what happened last year? They sent the film of that to Disney, and they invited them to go. They didn't give me the chance. I, I, I said, no, but this year, if they get invited again, I'm going. <laughs> so stress reducing, relaxing, having fun, smiling, affects the cells in our body, reduces cancer rates and longevity. It's scientific. I'm trying to demonstrate it, what I'm talking about, OK? And, and that you should require that of me. And uh, so uh, we can have in our body mutated cells. Remember I said about when they autopsied people that had died, 39% had some mutated cells that looked like cancer but never expressed themselves. They were there very quiet. So we can have mutated, mutated cells that don't grow. 
interesting by proper life proper lifestyle uh, while let me speak a few minutes about proper nutrition while I'm on that uh, what I recommend in terms of uh, eating. I, I follow the work of uh, Joel Furman, uh, Nutrient Dense Way of Eating. Good health is determined by the amount of nutrients in your food, foods of color. You can add mushrooms and onions, incidentally. If you have a piece of, uh, have some mushrooms and one piece of fresh onion, breast cancer rates go down 50%, right out of Dr. Furman's books, okay? So, Nutrient dense. I have a smoothie every morning. I have one today uh, where, you know, what do you put in them? You can go to Cashman Facebook, you see some recipes. There are other books. Uh, kale and spinach and frozen fruit and fresh root, curcumin and, and ginger um, and live fit. And, and, and you put it in a smoothie, and uh, I'm drinking it with a straw. If, if I'm busy running to something, I might uh, drink it. <laughs> on the run, okay? Uh, but you get tremendous nutrients right there. And I don't get hungry for hours because my nutrient need has been met. That's the reason fast food makes it so sick. There's no nutrients in it, no nutrients. You're eating a, a, a food without a nutrient and your body needs nutrients, so hunger continues and you will eat and eat and eat and then the fat cells fill up and the insulin levels go up, which and insulin opens the door for fat, uh, and, and you're gonna gain weight and increase rates of heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, blindness, dementia, to increase rates of breast cancer, for example. All can be avoided, 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 uh, okay? And uh, so that's the, a way of eating. No diet is needed. That's a problem with Weight Watchers, which I think is among the better programs, but you know, they give you points. You can eat all the vegetables you want, you know, no points. But if you eat bad food, they give you a certain number of points, so you're limited. But you're not getting over your food addiction. You're still a food addict. I'm disappointed at Oprah, disappointed. She had the chance, she had the money to make a difference in this nation. But this Weight Watchers doesn't do it because I know of someone that worked for me who used it. I mean, she was helped a little bit, but she never uh, lost her weight, she never lost her diabetes. We can get rid of them in six weeks if you eat right uh, because she's still eating bad food, still hooked on food. Addiction. Sugar's a booger and a hooker. <laughs> you gotta get over sugar addiction. Not all fat is bad. Eat good fats, guacamole, for example, guacamole toast I have once a week at least uh, with, with uh, uh, some, some egg on it and a, and a smoothie. Great breakfast. Fat, if you're metabolizing fat, insulin level does not go up. Insulin is anabolic. So when you eat sugar, insulin level goes up and you gain weight because it opens up the fat cell, the door to the cell. Every cell, it opens the door. That's fat in. You're going to gain weight. Insulin is really the, the big one. If you read Joseph Kraft, K-R-A-F-T, watch him on YouTube, or read his book, he'll tell you that insulin's the booger and the hooker after the, uh, sugar's the booger and the hooker, but insulin uh, <laughs> is the tank. <laughs> You're gonna look like a tank uh, if you eat a lot of sugar, the booger, okay? And it'll make you healthy. And uh, so let's talk a little bit more about the lion in the den, the BRCA gene. The BRCA gene actually repairs mutations in your genes. So, it is important, uh, but it's when that gene is mutated, it causes increased rates of breast cancer. And now it's changed through genetics, but also could be through lifestyle, okay? It's also in associated with increased rates of ovarian cancer, also associated with increased rates of pancreatic cancer, which seems to be a lot more common lately, uh, pancreatic uh, cancer, which can be related to uh, smoking and alcohol and Inf in information in, uh, in the BRCA gene. So several mutations probably are necessary to have genes express themselves as cancer. So it takes, it takes many changes of genes. Now we talk about that, it's not just one, not just one gene, okay? And uh, so avoiding radiation, uh, eating the right food, exercising, 
oral contraceptives seem to turn some of these bad genes off. And uh, having a child at a young age and breastfeeding will reduce breast cancer risk. Breastfeeding, not much, but some, okay? About 80% of women with a BRCA gene will get breast cancer live long enough, okay? 40% uh, of them will have ovarian cancer. We're talking about both genes, okay? And uh, so uh, breast cancer rate increases after age 40 if you have the, those genes. And uh, the average diagnosis of breast cancer is, is age 51, age 51. Uh, so uh, the BRCA gene is the final inspector of your DNA. So it's an every cell, okay? It's, it's, it's an every cell. And, uh, but, but damaged DNA is removed by the BRCA inspectors. Uh, it's the mutated BRCA gene that's the problem. Uh, that's the problem. What I'd hope to do in this little adventure, <laughs> this little road we took together, is to give you great hope. Uh, uh, just 70% uh, of the time, breast cancer is preventable. We, we need to uh, bring it up front. We need, Barbara Bradley needs to get involved. And that needs to be the biggest thing. I see a pink ribbon God everywhere. You know what I feel like doing? Maybe someday I will is to attach uh, this book, attach this book to every, <laughs> you see the tree, what I'm talking about is getting it, getting at the root, getting at the, at the root, the bottom there, the root of this tree, okay? Uh, to every pink ribbon, I attach one of these books for free. Uh, <laughs> I'm always thinking of some uh, to help people, because I love people, that's what it's all about. And, uh, and uh, and women would like to know this. I don't think it's intuitive to them as someone tried to tell me today. I think we need to present this uh, information. And I'm going to convert this to a CD ROM that people, you know, maybe get one for three bucks because there's some cost involved, okay? That they can, whether they drive in the car, they can uh, listen and gain this information. 200,000 uh, people who got it, maybe this year 300,000. I hear it's going up. Uh, and 40,000 deaths, I hear it's going up. Uh, and we can avoid that much. Isn't that a wonderful thing? We can save 70,000 people in this, this nation. Uh, that's just fantastic. I think it, ca it can be done. And th th that's the good news. This is not diagnosis uh, to your gun, baloney. Uh, and and e even you th don't accept that with your mind. Remember LaShan's story? Uh, Dr. LaShan and the breast cancer patient at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, uh, uh, there. Cancer spread everywhere. Uh, and then five years later, studies have found nothing. One case is not absolute proof, but I, so after he studied many more people, I think he did find the truth, that the, the, the state of your mind uh, and the knowledge that you have can uh, prevent, cure breast cancer, 70% of the time at least. Uh, and I don't think one single drug, I hope they find it, but uh, I, I, I doubt that will happen anytime soon, at least not for a couple of dec decades. Anyway, I do this because I love you, I care about you. If you need some coaching on this, call the Three Rivers Pharmacy uh, and uh, right there by the Fireside or Concordia High right there. I see people for free on Friday mornings, uh, no, ch no charge. I'll educate you further, uh, show you what you ought to read, and uh, thanks so much. I love you. That's why I'm here. Uh, namaste, and uh, join us uh, in our message of, uh, of wellness. Our breast cancer is preventable 50, 70 percent of the time. That's wonderful news. Thanks so much for watching this show. <laughs> okay. <laughs>